It's a special Dave Day here on Community NEPA News. I'm Ken Kerr with Dave Seaman, Standard Speaker Sports Editor, and our SSP TV sports intern, Nathan Pliska. Nathan, thank you for coming on. Dave, you too. Let's start with the Penn State Ohio State matchup. So the Nittany Lions lose 28 to 17 to a team many consider the number one team in the country. Nate, as a Penn State fan, as a sports observer, were you disappointed with the game? Did you think Penn State did all right? How'd you think it went? I thought they did all right on the defense, but on the offense, I think that they need still need work. You think if there was a few more offensive plays, maybe even that first half, the game might have gone a little bit differently? At yes, the yes, I do think that. Well, the gap between Penn State and Ohio State, do you think it's closing a little bit? Do you think Penn State's getting closer? Yes, I do think that they can beat them. Do you, like, think, do you think next season that this might be a Penn State maybe, victory? Yes. Penn State defense was very impressive against the number one offense in the country. Dave, I think there was a lot of positives to take away from this game. Yeah, you talk about defense. Uh, the defense was, you know, strong, especially in the second half. Uh, you know, Ohio State, like we said, they did what they needed to do, but so did Penn State. I mean, you, you get yourselves back in the game, and uh, if you're watching that game, you say maybe they could force one fumble, and then they end up forcing two fumbles, and uh, the offense takes advantage of a short field and gets back in the game. And uh, you remember that, you know, a drop pass away from maybe tying that game, and then th then we'll see what. Happens. Then we don't know what what can happen to get an entire game. Uh, uh, again, you got to give Penn State credit for not folding, but you got to give Ohio State credit as well because uh, you know they, they they faced adversity for the first time this season and uh, they re responded to the challenge. Uh, now it's a question of you know Penn State not sulking over the game that they said all the right things after the game. Uh, are, are they going to bounce back? And uh, you know you got a team like Rutgers where you should be able to beat. And you're ten and two going into a bowl game. And I think a, a, any Penn State fan, if, if you're being honest about it, uh, would take a ten and two season going into this season. Yeah, fun team to watch. Let's switch gears to the NFL. The Philadelphia Eagles and Nathan. I didn't watch this game. I was sitting there on a Sunday, still recovering from that Ohio State game. So what kind of happened in this game? As an Eagles fan, were you disappointed? You said the offense maybe struggled a little bit. Yes, the offense did struggle a little bit. But what did you like in the game? Was there anything you took out and you're like, well, okay, this isn't bad? The defense, actually, when they forced Wilson to do a couple of fumbles and then interception. So you still have faith in the Eagles. Do you think yeah. they're going to make the playoffs this year? Yes, I do. All right. Because Dallas has a tougher schedule coming up and the Eagles have an easier one. So we'll see. We'll see if they could do it. They do have Dallas coming up on that schedule in a little bit. That second game will be in Philadelphia. Dave, as you do look at the Eagles, some Eagles fans disappointed under 500 now, but they still have a lot to play for. Yeah, I mean, they've been so banged up at the receiver position. You know, Carson Wentz doesn't look the same right now, but then again, he's he lost a few offensive linemen to injury. Uh, the receiving core has been beat up, depleted. Um, so, you know, yeah, you could say there are excuses this time, but there are real reasons why uh, the Eagles haven't been able to move, uh, move the football. And, uh, you know, uh, their offense to struggled and you got to give their defense uh, props you know the defense has kept the Eagles in the game waiting for them to make a big play and they're two high powered offenses that the Eagles have played in back to back weeks when you think about New England last week and uh, Seattle this past week and uh, the Eagles defense more than held their own uh, uh, the, the de offense couldn't get the job done but uh, uh, like, like we said, you know, the Eagles still have an opportunity, you know, still only one game behind Dallas in the division standings. They still have to play Dallas. Well, Dave, Tamaqua area head football coach Sam Bonner, he said in the standard speaker, final four, man, you can't beat it. Well, we can beat it if we win next week. Tamaqua making it to the state semifinals, the Eastern final. Impressive win over Wyoming. Missing. What I knew going into this game was, Dave, Wyoming Missing, a good team. They took down some big time Schuylkill League competition earlier in the year in Pottsville and North Schuylkill, but Tamaqua, the formula keeps working. Working that offensive line, Nate Boyle on both sides of the ball, Matt Kissler on both sides of the ball. He had 112 receiving yards. He had an interception on defense. Nate Boyle, 206 rushing yards, interception on defense, and Braden Knobloch, 155 passing yards. It keeps working. You said you saw some similarities to a Hazelton area football team here. Yeah, when you look back, uh, I look at this team, and uh, Steve Stallone and I were talking about it, that uh, I think it does remind me of the 2007 Hazelton area team. That team had another Nate, Nate Aegis, uh, run wild in the playoffs, uh, took them on a, on a deep playoff run that year. They had a quarterback similar number, same number as a matter of fact. Joey Cost at that time is Braden Knobloch. Both, you know, exceptional throwers, great athletes uh, with the ball in their hands, tremendous leaders. Uh, that team had great receivers back in Hazleton back in the day and the, this one in, in this Tamako team with Matt Kissler, like you said, he's, you know, but between him and Nate Boyle, they're so versatile too and uh, that makes them tough and, uh, and then you look on their offensive line. Not the biggest teams in the world, not very big, but but it's scrappy as heck. They're just going to fight you and fight you, and uh, they're they're not they're going to play you to the final whistle. And uh, you know, both exceptionally fun teams to watch. And you know, you get a team uh, that uh, a community that rallies behind a team like this, and uh, 
who knows what could happen? Playing a team like Wyoming area now, uh, you know, that's uh, also kind of from this region too. So uh, a, lot, a lot of interest in that game. Let's close this out right now. We'll bring Nathan back in. Nathan, it's the end of the year. What bowl game is Penn State playing in after, after the season's all over? I'm not sure, but probably the Rose Bowl maybe. You're, you're going with the Rose Bowl? You yeah. think they'll be in pass? I'd be so happy, Nathan. All right, Dave, how about you? It's the end of the season. Where do you think Penn State's going bowling? I, I think it's going to be the Outback Bowl. Dave, I thank you. Nathan, I thank you for your time. Look for Dave's work in the Standard Speaker, and you'll see more of Nathan and me here on SSP TV.